Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Dhamma meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone who is, is interested is welcome to join. Please send in your question one at a time. Be brief and precise. Also, let me know how the audio and video is doing today. I am waiting for your comments and your questions. Here comes the first one, Kim Boon Chu. Good afternoon, Najan. Good afternoon to you. Meta Vandana, audio and video is good. Thank you. Kenneth Tan Kibok, greeting Ajahn, may you be well and happy. Audio and audio, audio and video is clear. Thank you. The, the video is a little bit blur. Maybe the quality is not as good as it should be. Be Lim Sukihoto Ajahn. Satu Satu, Shio Hishan, Good afternoon, Tanajan. Audio and video are very good. Thank you, Tanajan. You're welcome. Hong mm. Bi Shin, Miring, thank you, Mom. From Kalantan, nice to see you, Mom. Well, thank you. Nice to see you, too. Hope everything is well with you. Lisa Lynn Rabinowitz, 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 Lisa Rabinowitz. What is the best way to deal with food craving? Thank you. The best way is not to eat. And the way to make you feel like not eating is to think of the food when it is in your mouth. See how it looks like or when it is in your stomach or when it comes out of your body. Think of the food once it enters the body. It doesn't looking, look delicious anymore. Don't think of the food on the plate because this will make you hungry, will make you crave. But think of the food that is in your mouth, that is being chewed and mixed with your saliva or uh, in your stomach when you have to vomit it out. Uh, when you excrete, excrete, excrete the food from your body. If you think of the food this way, your craving for food will be eliminated.
Where is everybody today? Everybody seems to be quiet. No comment, no question. Okay, here's one from Sisira Jayalat from Colombo, Sri Lanka. I am 81 years old and have meditated for over 50 years. I was introduced to forest tradition by Dr. Stalin. Betty Moody from California, who has visited you for a number of times. I would like to clarify about my practice. One, daily in the morning and evening in our shrine room, I light up lamp. I light up lamp, offer flower, and meditate. Two, we offer arms in the morning and noon. Three, after meditation, I chant Kalana, Kalaniya Sutta and give merit to Brahma, Devas, and good gods. This is the Sri Lanka tradition of worshipping. Kindly let me know if the sequence of events I mentioned is okay. I received Sri Labhata Palamasa, attachment to rites and ritual. If so, what changes are necessary? Well, if you want to advance in meditation, then you have to put in more time for meditation. You can reduce the other activities. Once you start to meditate, meditate you can skip or you can suspend the other activities that you do and spend it on meditation. We want as much time for you to have the time to develop mindfulness and meditation. So you can skip the, the rituals and start doing the mindfulness. As soon as you open up your eyes, start to recite Bhutto, 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 or keep watching your body movement. And then sit down and meditate when you meditate, watch your when you can watch the breath at the tip of your nose. Just keep watching. Don't follow the breath in or out. Just watch it at the tip of your nose. Be aware that the breath is going in and that the breath is coming out. Do this. Do this a lot, all day long, if it's possible. Then you advance. Your meditation will advance more rapidly. Good morning, Ka. Have a nice day, Satu Satu. You too. Have a nice day. Ong Ray Satu. Ruth Lee, Alam Sanya. Namaste, Gan, dear John. Audio is clear. Thank you. Kwan Patum Napa, Satu Satu. Kalai Lai, Namo Amitotu. Meta Mandana, we have a forest mum on Nutanga in California right now. He's in South California. His name is Jakaro Piku. Thank you. I've never met him before. Nikita. Kiwashi. Hello, Jan. When I started meditating 15 years ago, my samadhi was strong. After some transformative experiences, I tried to get back to that state unsuccessfully. My samadhi decreased over the years, even though my effort and meditation time increases. To this day, I have not been able to establish deep and Deep and consistent samadhi. I became a monk for one year, 2014 to 15, 
but I still was not successful at deepening samadhi. Now I am a layman. Again, I meditate every day. Do you have some advice? Well, you might have to consider the experience that you had was just one in a one in a million time experience. Something that might happen just once. So it might not happen again for a, for a while due to your mindfulness is not yet consistent and not strong enough yet. So you just have to be patient and keep practicing mindfulness and keep practicing samadhi as much as you can. And don't wish or expect the same result that you had a long time ago. Forget about the result. Think of it as just one unique, extraordinary experience that only might come once in a long, long time. So don't, don't wish or expect it to happen every time you meditate. Because your expectation is the one that is blocking your advance and your practice. So come back to the basic. Start with mindfulness. Try to maintain mindfulness all day long from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep. And then sit down and meditate whenever you can. Watching your breath or reciting the mantra. And don't expect anything. Just keep doing. And sooner or later, you might be able to enter into deep samadhi again. I think one of the hindrances to your expectation of the result that you have gained once a long time ago. You have to forget about that and consider it to be a unique, extraordinary experience. Sometimes things just fall into place briefly and you get that experience. But it, it doesn't mean that you will get it every time you meditate. So right now what you need to develop is mindfulness. Constant, consistent mindfulness. And then when you meditate, just watch your meditation object. Don't wait for the result to happen. Good morning, Prajan. Thank you very much for your Dharma teaching. Now I am still happy all the time anyway. Good. Ramsat JW, greeting to Prajan. Continue practice Dharma all day to sleep and give mindfulness all the time. And have mindfulness all the time. Very good. Venerable Mansa Satu Chayadin Yamada, good morning, Prajan. Good morning to you. Christine Koe Satu Satu Nikita Kriboshe, thank you, Ajahn. You're welcome. Namlin Satu Satu. Adeline Chin. Good afternoon, Tanajan. Greetings to you. We just arrived in Phuket. Happy to be listening to your Dharma teaching today. Welcome to Thailand again. Hope you enjoy your stay in Phuket. And don't forget to meditate. Meditation is better than sightseeing. But it, but it is harder to get to. Sightseeing is easy but it's just a brief form of happiness. Meditation is better, but it's harder to get to. Have to you need to have persistent effort in maintaining mindfulness.
Question from Samanji. Question number one, we know that a person can achieve soul, soul pen status if he can get rid of the first three fetters, namely Sakaya Niti, Vijigicca and Silabhata Paramasa. What steps should the Buddhist follow to get rid of these three fetters? Could you kindly enlighten the readers on the procedure to be followed to get rid of the three fetters? Well, first you have to develop equanimity through jhana. And in order for you to develop equanimity through jhana, you need to have sila or morality. You need to keep the eight precepts first. And you have to practice this consistently, continuously, all the time, doing nothing else. You have to be a professional practitioner. You cannot go to work and then come back and practice on your day off because this will not give you enough time to, to keep the, the practice going forward. In order to, for your practice to go forward, you have to give up everything else and concentrate your effort, all of your effort in the practice of see, morality, meditation, and wisdom. So you have to go look for a quiet place like in the forest somewhere, or living in a quiet monastery which allows you to do the practice all day long. Once you have, once you can do this, then when you get to the quiet surrounding like the monastery, then you have to keep the eight precepts, at least the eight precepts. And then you will have to Practice mindfulness all day long, from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep, and and meditate whenever you have the time to get your mind into jhana, to the fourth jhana, so you can get equanimity. Once you become well, well versed or proficient in your samadhi practice, then when you come out of your samadhi, then you have to have to teach your mind that the body, the body is, is not yourself. The body is temporarily, it's a nidja, it's subjected to aging, sickness, and death. So you have to teach your, body, your mind to, to accept aging, sickness, and death. When the body becomes sick and gets painful, you should accept not try to reject or try to deny or try to try to get rid of the painful feeling that arises from your sickness. You have to learn to live with it, take it as it comes, as well as with death. If your body should die, you should accept it because it is an anatta. It's not, it, it is not you and it's not something you can stop or prevent. You just have to let it happen. Once you can do this, you can let go of your attachment to the body, to your feelings, the painful feeling. You will have overcome the first factor of Sakaya Diti. And when you have let go of the Sakaya Diti, you experience peace of mind of letting go. Then you, and then, then you will see the Four Noble Truths clearly in your mind. So this meaning you are seeing the Dhamma. Once you see the Dhamma, you have no doubt in the Buddha, whether he existed or not, because the Dhamma came from the Buddha. And the one who can see this is the Sangha, which is you. So you will have no, no more doubt in the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. And you will also have no attachment to rites and ritual because you see that your, your, your suffering, your stress, your bad feeling arises from your craving and your bad action of bad karma. So you will not do any more bad karma. You will, keep the, you will maintain the five precepts for the rest of your life. 
and you don't need to go to do any rites or ritual when you have stress in your mind. When you, you're not feeling good about something, you understand that it's the nature of things to be like that, and you can let go and accept things as they come. So this is basically what you will have to teach the mind with wisdom. See that everything is anicca, dukkha, manata, including your body and the feelings from the body, the body feelings. You cannot control them. You will have to, you have to face them calmly with equanimity. Then you will have no dukkha, no stress. Batumwan Boransa, Boransan, yes, I agree. Okay, I'll skip some questions. Adeline Chin, yes, I understood. Our daily practice has, to, has not stopped. Good. Yulin Go, Satu Satu. Question number two from Samanji. A lay person can become a sotapada. Can he live his day to day life the normal way after becoming a sotapada? Some of his practices will change. He will not spend much time with sensual pleasure activities. Now, he or what he do commit any bad karma, he will maintain the high precept for the rest of his life. And he will seek more, more, more solitude. He will look for more, more time to practice, because he would want to advance further. Maybe he would decide. He would decide to become a monk eventually, because you know the best way to reach the highest goal is to become a monk or a meshi. But to one, yes, I agree. Kwan Li Man, dear Tanajan, with respect, I saw the news, it is 54 degrees in Thailand. No matter what the weather is, we should stay within inside us. It's always good, right? If your mind is calm and peaceful, you, you will not be affected by the heat of the body. But you have to look after your body also. So you have to stay in in a cooler place, if it's too hot, you might have to take a shower or something to relieve the, the heat from the body. But your mind will remain cool and calm, not affected if you have mindfulness and wisdom. Li De Lua, I I don't like to do I don't like to socialize, and hence I spend most of my time alone and taking care of my family members. However, some of my friends advise me to go out more to socialize in order to lead a healthier lifestyle. What is your advice for me, please? Thanks. Well, there are, there are different ways of living. Not socializing is also a healthy way of, of lifestyle. If the person doesn't doesn't have this, the person will not understand. So people sometimes think that to be healthy, to have a healthy lifestyle, you have to socialize. But in fact, it's more poisonous to socialize than not to, to socialize. Because people you meet sometimes can bring you stress and anxiety. So it's better, for me, it's better to live alone and find peace from your meditation practice because there is no poison in meditation. But when you socialize, you have to run into people and people, some of them are not so kind and not so good. So my advice is to remain uh, to not to socialize and to live in solitude if, if possible. But if you have to do work with your family, do what you have to do, 
You must spend your time alone as much as possible and meditate. This is the best way for your for your lifestyle, for your healthy lifestyle. And Lim Chi Satu Satu Pet Choi Chong Satu Satu Alvin Lee Wei Ping Good afternoon, Tanajan. Thanks for your profound Dhamma teaching. Satu Satu. You're welcome. Atuman. Yes, I've been listening to your Dhamma in Thai and in English. Mandela Shi, thanks to Prajan Sunday Dhamma teaching. You're welcome. Shio Hishan, Tanajan, can many people stay at your temple for a few days? Yes. We have two types of accommodation for male, either in the temple or on the mountain. On the mountain it's much more austere living than in the temple. In the temple you have electricity and running water, but on the mountain you don't have electricity or running water. But it's much more quiet. You have to check with my assistant to the assistant Ajahn Suchat email. Piyao and Indira Malpola. Hi, Tanajan. So nice to see you. What is the difference between discernment release and awareness release? I think one is wisdom and the other is mindfulness. Discernment release is wisdom. You, you see everything as anicang dukang anatta and then you let go of your attachment. Why awareness release is mindfulness. By using mindfulness to stop the mind from, from attachment temporarily, by pulling the mind away from the objects. But it doesn't yet see that they are anijang dukkha mananta. So awareness, discern, awareness release will be temporarily, while discernment release will be permanent. The seven release is permanent because it's wisdom. Awareness release is temporary because it's mindfulness or um, of samadhi. Nabiti Namasagara Ajahn. Colonel Tanani Wandami Ajahn. What fresh juice is suitable for offering tomorrow afternoon time? Uh, the, 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 the fruit has to be not bigger than your 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 fist, you know, when you hold your fist up like this, this this is the size of the fruit. Usually, size of apple or uh, oranges are smaller, but nothing bigger. No coconut, no pineapple. These are the size of the fruits are too big. So you have to use the fruit the size of your fist uh, or smaller. You have to squeeze all the juice out. And separate the bean, the meat from from the from the juice. You have to use a strainer to separate the juice, the meat from the the juice. But now they they have they have these fruits uh, packages already, so you don't need to do the the work yourself. Any lam, satu, sulan ui, nea jan, good day to you. May I ask what is your view on what is considered? What is constant? Constant is continuous, always there. Like mindfulness, always, always there mindfulness. It's made constant. Ram sanjay you. in case of when I said, I saw my bad act in the past happen during sit in meditation. Working in Kamatana, consider that act for a while and I tell my mind that I will not do bad act and hurry up to remove that thinking and back to focus by praying. Abudu Buddha, is this correct? 
Yes, try to try not to pay attention to your thoughts. Come back to your mantra, Bhutto, Bhutto. Shio Hishan, thank you, Tandajan. You're welcome. Hi, John. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon to you. Question number three from Samanji. In the time of the Buddha, there were so many Arahants. Why are Arahants rare today? Does today complex world stand as a hindrance in achieving the highest mental status, Arahant? I think during the time of the Buddha, there were more, there, there were more spirituality. They are not so advanced in the in the, the the way of the defilement. Nowadays, our modern world is really the 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 man, manifestation of the defilement. Everything that we build are built by the our defilement. So, in the on, in, in a modern world today, the defilements are much stronger than the than the dharma. During ancient time. The dhamma, the uh, the defilement were not as strong, so it was easier for the dhamma to to be to be to be practiced and to be achieved than today. Today we are being sucked in by the defilement's uh, achievement. The defilement built all these sensual pleasures objects for us to become attached to. So it is harder for us to to leave the sensual pleasure and seek the life of uh, spirituality. We have to go back to the basic if we want to achieve uh, advance in, in Dhamma. Go live in, go back to live with nature live simple life, then you will have more time to do the practice. But if you live in the modern modern day life, you are all surrounded by the traps of the defilement. Everything that you have are created by your your defilements to trap you in the world of sensual pleasure. Shio Hishen. Why monks cannot drink coconut water in the afternoon? That's because it's not allowed to land away. Because the, it's, 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 the fruit is bigger than the fist, the size of the fist. So anything bigger than the size of the fruit, we are not allowed to drink the juice. So coconut is where it's bigger than the size of, of the fist. To land with dear John, thank you for answering our question. It's a noble constant to even for the un really untrained mind like us. Yes, we, we we have the knowing in order to be able to know what we are talking about. It's so it's a knowing that knows what we are talking about, what we are discussing, what we see, what we hear. It's the knowing that knows. Without the knowing, then we'd never be nothing. We will not know anything. But our knowing is being influenced by the defilements. So the defilement will lead the knowing to go have cravings for, for things that will 
cause the knowing to have suffering or stress. So we have to teach the knowing that to let go of the cravings, because craving is bad for the knowing, for the knower. It creates stress for the knower. Question number four. People across the globe are getting ready to celebrate Visakha Puja. What is your message for Visakha Puja? We should study the life of the Buddha and follow his example. This is the way to salvation, to the liberation from Dukkha. Study how the Buddha made his way to enlightenment and follow his example. This is what the Buddha want us all to do if he wants to be liberated from Dukkha or suffering. Piyal and Indira were polar. Tanajan, a person who had not been friendly for a long time and has done wrong to you, wants to come back to our lives. Although we have forgiven that person, we would like to keep away what is the best approach to this situation according to Dhamma without hurting anyone. Well, just continue to stay away from that person because you have, if you have, if you stay away from that person and haven't hurt that person, so what, what is the need to go back to that person? If you find that that person is a bad, uh, bad, bad for you, you might not know whether that person is being sincere or not. So if you can. If you can avoid that person, continue to avoid that person. It, is, it doesn't hurt that person anymore. Because had it hurt, it, that person would have been hurt a long time ago already. So sometimes you know something is bad, then if you can avoid that, that person, continue to avoid that person. But if you cannot avoid and you have to meet that person, then try to be nice. But don't have to to be close to that person anymore. Try to excuse yourself away from that person as soon as possible. Because you don't know whether you will be bitten by that person again or not. Lin Lin De Hua Lin De Hua I, Tanajan, have been living in great anxiety over the past few months. When the, when the anxiety attacks, I don't feel like doing anything. I just feel like sitting there doing nothing. At that moment, the mind seems overwhelming and it's difficult to meditate. What should I do with things? Just remain still and don't do anything until the mind becomes calm again. Just, just try not to do anything. Don't say anything. Don't do anything. Don't think if you, if you can. Try to stop thinking also if it's possible. If you can chant, do the chanting. Or if you can listen to Dhamma talk, listen to Dhamma talk. But the problem is don't try to don't try to wish the anxiety away. Try to learn and accept the anxiety as part of your life. The anxiety is a nature. Eventually it will disappear sooner or later if you leave it alone. Don't try to get rid of anxiety. Let the anxiety come and go. Everything look at the anxiety like you look at the weather. Treat the anxiety like you treat the weather. Everything will come and go sooner or later. If you can find the cause of your 
anxiety, then stop it if you can. Because of your anxiety or your craving for something, when you cannot get something, then you become anxious. So if you can stop your craving, then you can stop your anxiety completely, permanently, with wisdom. And a woman, Satu Satu, Kaya Deva, Kamnamasakan Tanajan. Question number five from Sanaji. How should an ideal Buddhist celebrate Visakha? By follow the teaching of the Buddha, practicing dana, sila, and pavana. Any lamb, I prajan, can mom drink tea or chrysanthemum tea in the afternoon? Yes. Yes, they are considered to be medicinal, to be medicine. Jip, Jip Long Gun, Satu, Su Lan Ui, Niajan is the eight worldly wind, wind constant to our constant to and always there to affect everyone. Our dukkha, our dukkha seems constant and come from the eight worldly ones too. What is your view on this, Satu? The eight worldly ones, they come and go, they keep changing. Sometimes they are good and sometimes they are bad. But they are always with us. And the way to deal with them is just like dealing with the weather. We have to face them calmly. Let them come and go and don't be attached to them. Mita Vandana Ajahn, I heard that the Buddha turned the Dhamma wheel three times. Can you explain please? No, I don't, I, I cannot, I cannot explain this. I don't know. I don't know about the Dhamma wheel. So Chim Chim Satu. Cornell Kennedy, Vandamiya Jan, can give example specific fruit to dip to offer to offer afternoon time. You cannot offer the fruit in the afternoon. You have to you have you can offer the juice from these fruit that are smaller than the size of your feet that, that's smaller than the size of your fist. Usually they are like apples, oranges, grapes. These are the fruit that you, these are the fruit juices that you can offer to monks in the afternoon. Also, why not suitable to offer fruit that has been cooked? I don't know. Lantai Satu Satu Deborah Rose and Pearls Satu Piao and Indira Vapola Tanjan Nibbana a state of release of mind from defilement come gradually in segment or does it come all at once suddenly? They come in steps like the four steps of enlightenment. First you become a Sotapana, then you become a Sagidagami. Uh, an anagami, and then eventually an arahant. That's when you have full enlightenment at the at the fourth stage at the fourth stage of enlightenment. Then you achieve full nibbana. Chinese character satu, pet, marble, Mabel. So Chin Chim Ajahn, can four noble truth be related? My moment, Kanda Chitta, for first mind feel stress, Dukkha, then mind get relief, Niroda. These are things that are happening in your mind. First you have Dukkha, 
because you have cravings. Then when you have cravings, you have dukkha. When you stop your cravings, then your dukkha disappears. This is how it happens in your mind. First you, first you have cravings first. Craving for something. When you crave for something, you start to have dukkha. When you, when you get what you wanted, then your cravings stop. Then your dukkha disappears. Nirodha appears. Uh, another way, when you have du when you have dukkha, you, you know that this dukkha is caused by your craving. Then you stop your craving and not going after what you crave for. And if you can stop your craving, then your dukkha will disappear. This is the right way. Limho satu satu. Sam Lam, dear Jan, can chanting get into samadhi? Not deep samadhi. You can have some level of samadhi, some lower level of samadhi, but not a deep level of samadhi. In order to get into a deep level of samadhi, you need to wash your breath. Question number six from Samadhi. People keep on violating violating the five precepts. Could you enlighten the readers on the importance of keeping the five precepts and worldly and spiritual benefits of following the five precepts? Well, if you break, break the five precepts, you are causing dukkha or, or stress in your mind. When you do something bad, you feel bad. And this feeling of bad feeling will accumulate in your mind. And, and when you die, this mind will then be consumed by this bad feeling again. And the mind is being consumed by bad feeling is called, is, is, is considered to be living in hell. But if you don't do it, and if you keep the, if you keep the five precepts, then you are not creating any bad feelings in your mind. You are not accumulating bad feelings in your mind. So when you die, your mind will not be consumed by bad feeling, and your mind will not be considered to be in hell. So Chi Ching thanks Sajan right away. Wei Hua Satu, Christine Koe, dear Tajan. May you be well and strong. Thank you. Juan Liman, dear Tanajan, my friend asked me to help in the Buddhist activities because sharing Dhamma is a good deed, but I cannot fix my time to help. I feel contented to practice at home. Would this be selfish? No, it's a different level of practice, that's all. See, it's higher than the practice of dana. Dana is a lower form of practice. Once you start to meditate, then you are into a higher form of practice. And this form of practice requires that you have to, to live alone and not to socialize with anybody. So this is not being selfish. It's just being that you're practice, practicing on the higher level of, of practice. Sam Lam, thanks. Thanks, Ajahn, for your teaching, Satu Satu. Sulanu, dear Ajahn, thank you for sharing. I feel glad when you remind us again that when we stop our craving, Dukkha can disappear. Satu Satu.
Question number seven from Samanji. How would you describe the Maya of an Arahant? The Maya of an Arahant is free from suffering because it has no cravings left in the mind. No cravings for sensual pleasures, no craving for beings, and no craving for non-being. Non so it doesn't take up any more rebirth. Deborah Rosenfeld, how do you stop craving? Then you have to practice the three steps of practices, meaning you have to practice dana, sila, and pavana. Nana is giving or charity. Sila is morality, keeping the precepts. And then Pavana, which is pra practice mind meditation, mindfulness meditation, and wisdom meditation. Piyā and Indra Vāpola. Yetanajan, why is suffering essentially defined as clinging to five aggregates? Because you're clinging to the three characteristics of existence. You're clinging to something that is anicca, something that will cost you dukkha, something that you cannot control. So suffering is arise from your attachment to the five aggregates because they are the five aggregates are anicca, dukkha, and anatta. Quote E ten, Ajahn is it all right if one cannot practice eight precepts but five precepts only? Yes, when you first start, you have to start from, from from something that you can do, but then eventually you would want to practice more. And then you will practice the eight precepts. As you as you advance in your practice, you will find that keeping the eight precepts will be better for, than the five precepts. But when you start, you can start with the five precepts first. Chi Shin Chu and Dear Jan, I have to comfort. I have to comfort of meditating in an aircon room. Is that wrong? It is not wrong, but it can be a problem in the air conditioner. It's not working, then you might not be able to meditate. So it's better to meditate under under the natural surrounding in which you don't you don't have to rely on any other thing to to help you meditate. The Buddha didn't have any air condition when he meditated. He 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 is surrounded by natural settings. Live naturally, practice naturally. Don't use anything extra to, to, to aid in your meditation practice because it can be a problem when it doesn't work. When the thing that aids you is not working, then you'll find it to be a problem for you. Raymond N.G. Ajahn is playing table tennis a good consideration, good concentration. I know it is not as good as meditation, but it's still better than let the mind wandering place advice. Yes, it's, it's, it's a way of having concentration, but you, can, you cannot do it all the time like you do with mindfulness. You can, you can play t table tennis for one or two hours, then you get tired. But you have to continue on with your concentration. So you should use mindfulness meditation, which you can do all day long. Sulanu Diyajan, when Buddha, chief disciples, Sariputta and Mangalana passed into Nibbana, Buddha said that the assembly seemed emptier than usual. Thus enlightened Beings also feel the loss of people too, so too. Once feel the loss, but not with, with not not with sadness, but just with with reality. That's all. Feelings, feeling, feeling lost because that is the reality. 
but not fight feeling any sadness from the loss. One just, one just merely acknowledging that there, there is a loss, but there is no sadness in the loss. Nalilat satu satu. Rusli Alamsia, thank you very much for your kind wisdom, dear John. You're welcome. Samante satu satu. Komnit Kamon satu. Question from Justin from California. How do I let go of, of envy? I don't like having this. As human, because it causes harm emotionally and spiritually, and makes the other human feel hurt inside, and it does me harm too. I get nervous. Sometimes, me being the outcast in my family and in and in school, it just occurs. But I try to fight it. Oh, because I know it's not good. You have to accept the law of karma, that we all did something good and bad in the past. And then this consequence, the consequence of our bad and good karma, then manifests itself in this life, making us better sometimes than others, and making others better than us some, some other time. So this is, you have to understand and accept the law of karma. Yeah, this is the way, this is the, your good and bad karma that caused you to be who you are now. And as who you are now, you might be better or you might not be good as other people. Because we all have different, cons uh, we have different level of good and bad karma performed in the past. Piyao in Indira Valpoda, Yetanajan, whatever that arises as a result of condition will pass away when the conditions are no longer present. Is it essentially pointing to emptiness? No, it doesn't point to emptiness. It, it just lets you know that whatever happens will then have to disappear, that's all. This is the way things work in this in this world that we live in. Things appear and then it will disappear. Then it will re-emerge again. They are like bubbles. So we just not be we should not be attached to anything because if they if you attach to something and when they disappear, they can cause you sadness. That's all. Good E ten. Thanks Q Ajahn for for the teaching, Satu Satu. So then we thank you, Ajahn. May you be well and be healthy. Thank you. Sayak Olivia, Wangju Tanajan. Any lam, hi, Prajan. Is it breaking our precept because some years ago we fetched a monk to buy coconut water in the afternoon? Whatever happened in the past, don't worry about it. Try not to do it again in this. Again, that's all that matters. What, what happened in the past, you cannot change. If you know that it was wrong, try not to do it again this, in, in the present. Meta Vandana, thank you for teaching, Ajahn. You're welcome. Ayi, Namasatu. Well, it looks like we all, that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for your participation. I hope this meeting will help you advance in your practice. Please, in the meantime, please stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on practicing. And if all goes well, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>